usually making PCB based on YouTube videos or instructables, is a good idea, but while doing so, you will also make some mistakes. So in this video, we will discuss, those five things, that you should avoid when designing and creating your own DIY printed circuit boards. One. Avoid thin traces. PCB has many traces, that carry signals or power between different components. The width of these traces, is set in design software based on the requirements, and can be measured in unit of mills. If you keep these traces too small, then they may not get transferred to PCB properly, and you will have many problems interconnecting your traces. In order to make it print and transfer properly to PCB, when designing the PCB make sure to keep your minimum trace width to between 15 to 20 mils at least. If space allows you can keep it between 20 to 30 mils. 2. Keep good tolerances to avoid short circuits. Traces going all around or PCB, need proper tolerances in between signals. It is highly possible, if the tolerance are not good, you may end up shorting your signal traces, while soldering your components, and you may not even notice this. It is crucial because, if this gets wrong, this can impact on the operation of your board. So to overcome this problem, it is suggested to use, at least the same width that you use for your main trace signals for the tolerances as well, it is good balance, and this will ensure all traces run smoothly. 3. Poor heat transfer Many DIY PCB makers use the laser printed PCB design, and transfer it to the PCB using heat. Most people use iron to do this, which is easily available. But when ironing your PCB, it is important to do it properly on edges, by tilting your iron on the front nose, and pressing on PCB. Do this on all edges evenly. Iron it for at least 5 to 10 minutes, to ensure toner gets transferred on all sides. Do not remove paper, before toner gets properly transferred. Also remember, that the PCB gets very hot during ironing, so don't touch it with your bare hand. After ironing is complete, put your PCB in water for 5 minutes, so that the paper gets soft, and is easy to remove. 4. Use FR4 board. There are many types of PCB boards available in the market that you can choose from. But for better strength and durability it is suggested to use FR4 material board. This board is easily available. It is fire retardant glass epoxy laminate, and is very durable as compared to other FR1, FR2 paper phenol based material. Also when selecting the board try to find the one with thicker copper clad. 5. Avoid force on component legs. When you make a mistake in soldering and would like to remove a component because you used the wrong one for any other reason you have to carefully and properly remove it from PCB. Use a solder suction pump or soldering wick to help you. But do not put force on the component legs while doing so as too much heat and force can remove the trace from PCB and damage it. This happens more frequently when the board gets too hot at one point. So avoid this mistake. 6. Check connectivity of traces. Once your board is fully etched the first thing you must do is to check the connectivity of all traces with your multimeter. This is important as this ensures the traces are not short and are properly etched. This debugging will make sure you don't have any etching related problems when you troubleshoot your board after full soldering. I hope these small and important tips will help you in your PCB making process. Thanks for watching make sure to like and subscribe the channel. Thank you.